and that is me just jumping up and down and this is where maybe you know he'll start on this island and it's up to him to kind of explore it find some resources and start to build his own ship so he can basically leave um, now right now we don't have any of the wildlife in there obviously there'll be creatures that might be time to attack him and all sorts so he's just using his uh, his grappling hook there which will be his main sort of way of traversing these islands um, and here he is sort of having our rudimental cutting down trees and he's using his rope now to just kind of tug it down and that'll collapse. Whoa! As long as it doesn't fall over my head, you should be fine. And this will be all oh network head. physics. I'll sort of roll and then he can kind of start to harvest that. Um, cut it up even more. Yeah, each one of these logs could be used as a physical object. Uh, I could have used them for any other purpose other than just resources. I could roll them down a hill and uh, just hit over somebody else on this path or I could just, who knows? It can be used in any way I can uh, think of. So now, again, I've just sort of flown through, then we can find some more people. They're just chilling out there, exploring, they're flying their ship. Uh, you've got three people on here. They're good for fuel, maybe they're seeking out, maybe they're being pirates, maybe they're searching for more people to, to rob or to nick stuff off of. And you can see them all, and they just exist in the world. Um, and they're able to do stuff, yeah, and it's all just happening all at the same time, no loading screens, all just sort of seamlessly in this one sort of physics persistence universe. But I'd say it's about time I sort of jumped into the game and uh, we started playing with some stuff. So Tom and myself are building quite a ship. I'm not sure why we need three, four fuel tanks. Perhaps we're going on a very long journey, but uh, I guess there's no such thing as too much fuel. I'm just worried that all that will be very, very heavy on the ship. We need quite a few cores to make it uh, fly. So, welcome Luke. Okay, so here I am. I've now joined these guys. They're just gonna, they're just gonna carry a tree along with them. And again, the, the weight of that will factor in. So the cores are still having, oh, there we go. It's popped off, see you later tree. Um, the weight of that tree would have factored into like how much their cores could have carried. So you can essentially overload a ship if you do uh, fly above them and just sort of drop a little junk on it really. Um, and that'll weigh their ship down. Now the ships are fairly sturdy because there's a lot of equipment on it that you'd need to take out before it will eventually fall. Um, and of course it's all, well they've boarded me now I think. Oh they've just taken out a cannon. I've got no way of flying back. Now these cannons, you know, they might be a nuisance on my deck so I can just, uh, can want, oh there goes a panel. So you can see that the ship will slowly sort of uh, fall apart. See if you can find that, you know, they, they've you've broken away enough of their panels, I'm now able to use my rope get in that, get into the heart of their ship, and then get into the cores and basically just start planting these bombs. <laughs> whoa, whoa, there we go, right, let's get out of there. So I planted like a little bomb, so now their cores are basically getting nailed. Um, the ship is kind of falling apart there. Whoa, whoa, I think it's time to go. Um, and it's gonna fall out of the sky, all the bits sort of raining down. Um, see you later, where's my ship? And there's those, all those bits rain down. Now, if there was an island below that, that would all just rain down onto an island. So if you had your crest on the side of one of these panels, uh, they would recognize you and say, oh, yeah, that, that ship belonged to uh, my friend, whatever. Uh, Put a picture there on my ship. And then let's find one I took earlier, like this one. It's not particularly interesting, but it's there. And then that's now physically in the world again. So this is a, the, the player kind of story and open-endedness we kind of let you have. Um, so when this ship, if it crashes, or anything was to happen, <clears throat> other players can come along and they can see almost like the history of your adventures um, and sort of pick apart this story of why this ship kind of maybe crashed. Um, so I can just stick the fuel gauge there if I really wanted to and now that'll tell me how much fuel the ship has. Um, so if you did have like a little room here you can basically put any instrument you want anywhere on this ship and it will kind of give you information about it. So as your ship gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you're probably going to want uh, the crew to know sort of certain vital statistics about the ship and you can plan sort of all these instruments around um, to, to sort of give you that information. They're all in world as well, so there's, there's no sort of like UI or anything like that coming up. The draw distance is this amazing for a reason. When, when you are in combat or exploring, you can see 
uh, things very, very far away, people on other ships, people on other islands, creatures, etc. That's very important for you to making a decision or where you're going, what you're doing. You want to know what's up, up ahead if you pay proper attention. What's really beautiful about the game is that there's no single way uh, to do anything. Suppose that you're going to combat and your way to go about uh, 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 a battle is to have several cannons and each one of them manned by a different crewmate. That's absolutely fine as a strategy. As it is for me to just have a ship with no cannons whatsoever, but pile a lot of junk on top of the deck. Fly over your ship and tilt it just enough so the junk runs down over the, <laughs> the heads of your crew and weight your ship down so it goes into the abyss below. So anything can can be done if you can imagine it. If you can run, run ships into one another, you can uh, drag things be behind them and use those as hammers because of the pendulum effect and so on. It's that kind of emergent gameplay that we want to see uh, in online games that we have never been able to see before.